All right, we're going to approach the bus. And we start by looking under it, making sure there's no hanging parts and no leaks. Make sure that the wheels are not towed inwards. And we're going up and we're gonna check our amber clearance lights, our red and amber loading lights. We're gonna check our amber hazard turn signal lights. We're checking our amber running lights and our clear headlights. Making sure that they are all clean, clear, no cracks, no breaks, no obstructions or condensation. And their operation will be checked during the light check. Then we're going to go back up and we're checking our school bus logo, making sure it's present and not damaged or peeling, make sure it's on a reflective surface and it's legible. Then we're going to move down to the windshield, making sure that it's clean, clear, no cracks, no breaks, no illegal stickers or obstructions. Then we're going to check our windshield wipers, making sure that they are secured to the bus, no damage like brakes or weather rot. Their operation will be checked from the driver's compartment. Then we're going to go and we're going to check all of our mirrors. We're going to make sure that they're all secured to the bus. We're checking the mirror faces, making sure they are clean, clear, no cracks, no breaks. And we'll check their visibility from the driver's compartment. All right, all good. Then we're going to move back to the front. We're checking the bumper, making sure it is secured to the frame of the bus and all bolts present and tight. We're making sure that it has no cracks, which would make it unserviceable, but dents and welds are okay. Then we're checking our crossing gate, making sure it is secured to the bumper of the bus, all bolts present and tight. We're going to make sure that it open and closes smoothly. Its operation will be checked during the light test. Then we're going to go check the hood straps, making sure that they are secured to the hood of the bus and to the body of the bus. We're making sure that they are securely mounted and that there's no damage like tears, cracks, weather rot. Going under the hood of the bus, we're going to start by checking our air intake canister. We're making sure that it's securely mounted, all bolts present and tight. We're making sure that the latches are secure and tight. We're going to make sure there's no damage like cracks. And we're going to check the indicator to make sure that the filter is clean. Then we're going to check our coolant reservoir and our washer fluid reservoir, making sure they're both securely mounted. Make sure there's no cracks or leaks. We're making sure that both of them have their caps present and tight. And make sure that they're both full of fluid. Then we're going to check our alternator, serpentine belt, and water pump, making sure that they're securely mounted, all bolts present and tight. We're going to make sure that there's no signs of electric arcs or burning on the alternator, make sure there's no leaks from the water pump under it or under the bus. And then we're checking to make sure that the serpentine belt is in all the pulleys and has no damage like cracks or weather rot, and making sure that the ribs are intact. It has no more than three-fourths inch of give. Then we're going to check our radiator, making sure it's securely mounted with no damage like holes or punctures so it's not leaking. Then we're checking our radiator fan, making sure that all blades are present and it spins freely. Then we're checking our upper and lower radiator hoses, making sure that they have no damage like chafing, weather rot, or cuts. It's not, none of them are leaking and that the fasteners are secure. Then we're going to go down and we're going to check our frame and axle. Make sure they have no cracks, bends, welds, or aftermarket modification and that all bolts are present and tight. Then we're going to check our leaf springs. Make sure they have no cracks, twists, welds, or aftermarket modifications. Make sure they're properly stacked with spacers and that it's secured to the axle with its U-bolts. We're going to make sure that the leaf spring hangers, the front and the rear, are secured to the frame with all bolts present and tight and they're secured to the leaf springs with the fasteners. Then we're going to come over here, we're going to check our hydraulic shock, making sure that it is secured to the frame of the bus and to the axle with all bolts present and tight. It's a hydraulic shock, so we're also going to make sure there's no leaks. To check the air brake components in the tire. We're checking our lines and our hoses, making sure that there's no damage like cuts, gouges, or weather rot. We're making sure that the fittings are secure and there's no leaks, which would be indicated by a hiss. We're checking our air brake canister, make sure it has no damage, no aftermarket modifications. Make checking our safety clamp, making sure that it is present with no bends or twist, um, and it's secured with its bolt. Then we're moving down, checking our push rod, making sure that it's secured to the slack adjuster with its pins and cutter keys. Um, then we're also checking our slack adjuster, making sure it's connected to the push rod and to the S cams with its pins and cutter keys. Um, it's a greased item, so excess grease is okay. Then we'll move down, and we're going to check our brake drum, making sure that it's free from any damage, make sure it's got no bluing due to being overheated, make sure it's got no contaminants like debris or grease. Then we're going to check our brake padding. We're making sure that it has no less than a quarter inch of padding um, and no metal-to-metal -metal contact. You can check them through the viewports. 
Then we're moving out to the tire tread. On the front tires, there should be no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch. There should be no damage like cuts or gouges. Um, they should be evenly worn. Both tires should match. And the front tires cannot be retreaded. Going to the tire side wall, we're going to make sure that there is no damage, no gouges, no cuts, no weather rot. We're going to check for the specifications for inflation. Then we're going to move down to the valve stem, making sure that it's present, um, making sure that it's uh, got no damage, it's not leaking, and the cap's present. Then we're checking the rims, making sure they're in good condition and no damage, no wallowing of the holes. Make sure there's no separ separation between it and the tires due to underinflation. Um, then we're going to check all our lug nuts, make sure they are all properly secured and tight. Then we're checking our hub oil seal, making sure the mounting bolts are present. Um, we're making sure that the plug is present and there's no signs of an active leak. Then we're going to check our mud flap, make sure that it is uh, secured to the bus, it is not damaged, and we're making sure there's no more than eight inches from the bottom of the flap to the ground. Coming over to check the unique items on the driver's side. I'm going to start by checking back here the oil cap, making sure it's present and tight. Then we're going to our, check our dipsticks, making sure that the caps are present and in good condition. We check the dipsticks by pulling them out, wiping them off, dipping them back in, pulling them out, making sure they're at the proper fill levels. Then down here, um, we have our governor, air compressor, and power steering pump. We're making sure that they're securely mounted with all bolts present and tight. We're making sure that all the hoses and lines are secure and the fittings are good. These are gear-driven items. And we're making sure there's no leaks, which should be indicated by hissing. And we're checking our steering arm, making sure it is securely mounted with no cracks, bends, welds, or aftermarket modifications. Make sure the U-joints are in good condition. Um, they're greased items, so excess grease is okay. Moving to our Power steering gearbox, making sure it's securely mounted with the bolts present and tight. Make sure its hoses are in good condition and the fittings are secure. It's a gear-driven item. Uh, we're going over to our power steering fluid reservoir, making sure it is securely mounted, has no cracks or leaks. Um, make sure it's filled up and make sure the cap's present and tight. The cap is also a dipstick. Then we're going to our pitman arm, making sure it's securely mounted to the power steering gearbox and to the drag link with its castle nut and cotter pins. Uh, make sure it has no cracks, bends, welds, or aftermarket modifications. And then we're checking our drag link and our tie rods, making sure that they are securely mounted. No cracks, bends, welds, or aftermarket modifications. Securely mounted with those castle nuts and cotter pins. Um, also, they're greased items, so excess grease is okay.